The adductor canal block has become a hugely popular technique for pain control after total knee arthroplasty. It seems relatively easy to do, but there are some nuances that we've learned from experience along the way. And in this video, we'll talk about one such aspect, namely, what nerves are we after and how do we block them safely? In the early days of adductor canal block, the goal was to block the saphenous nerve somewhere along the anterior medial thigh. While there is controversy about nomenclature and anatomy for this technique, for our purposes, we'll consider the adductor canal block to occur at the midpoint of the thigh. The goal is to put local anesthetic just next to the artery, a convenient and highly visible target. The saphenous nerve is primarily a skin nerve of the calf, and for some time I couldn't figure out why it might be useful for knee replacement. Over time, it was discovered that other nerves, such as branches of the obturator or even the sciatic, might be blocked due to intermuscular fascial spread. And the one nerve that seemed to be the most consistent target was a nerve to vastus medialis. At the mid-thigh, this nerve has become primarily an articular nerve, innervating the anterior medial joint capsule. Now, this is important because this is where the medial parapatellar arthrotomy is done and most of the capsular trauma occurs during a total knee. You can see here that the nerve to vastus medialis contributes significantly to the anterior medial joint capsule, while the saphenous nerve only supplies a few twigs. So that's great, we get that nerve too, right? Well, not so fast. Enter the vasto-adductor membrane. This tough sheath stretches from the medial vastus muscle to the adductor group, separating the nerve to vastus medialis in the mid-thigh from the saphenous nerve in most patients. This can be seen on ultrasound as two separate fascial compartments with the two nerves separated by the membrane. Here we see two hyperechoic structures. The one on the left is a saphenous. The one on the right could be nerve devasis, but it could also just be an artifact. And for that reason, we use a nerve stimulator to evoke a motor response of just the medial vastus head, which can be felt on the medial knee as the needle approaches the nerve. The use of nerve stimulation has both a safety and an efficacy rationale. It ensures that you don't accidentally hit the nerve on the way to the artery, while ensuring that you do correctly identify it and administer local around it. The nerve is then carefully hydrodissected and a bolus of 10 mils of local anesthetic deposited in this fascial compartment. The needle is advanced further to the periarterial compartment that contains the saphenous nerve. An additional 10 mils is placed here. You can see here the two nerves are in two separate fascial compartments. With the ductal canal catheters, we take care to ensure that spread through the multi-orifice catheter is spreading into both compartments to maximize efficacy. In summary, both the nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous play a central role in the efficacy of the adductor canal block. These nerves are separated in many patients by the vasto-adductor membrane, and oftentimes the nerve to vastus is difficult to see. Nerve stimulation is easy and effective in order to identify the nerve, to protect it, and to make sure it's blocked. Finally, make sure you get local anesthetic in both compartments to reduce the chance of a failed vastus medialis nerve block.